I'm Stacey Briscoe, wine journalist and editorial consultant for Wine Industry Network. And I'm speaking with Sarah Jones, the vice president of Benson Marketing Group, which specializes in PR and uh, marketing for the wine and spirits industry. Um, so here at Wine Industry Network, we've been exploring the concept of virtual tastings as it pertains to the trade, um, as opposed to the consumer market. And Sarah is going to talk to us today about pitching and catering experiences specifically to wine media. So um, Sarah, why don't we start from the beginning and just kind of talk about how um, you guys define media in the first place, who you typically pitch to, whether it's critics, journalists, um, bloggers, influencers, um, and what that kind of entails, um, how you send those pitches out and how you even get people interested in your winery clients in the first place. <laughs> well, well, um, that's a great place to start. And thank you so much for having Benson, um, marketing join your series of videos. This is um, a great conversation. Um, the, what seems to have happened over the last few months is that trends have just accelerated in terms of the ways that we can communicate with um, our audiences like five years. You know, we've been trying to talk about doing virtual tastings for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, and now, you know, now there's really a reception for them because, you know, because we're not traveling. So, right. um, yeah, so the, to just start at the beginning, um, you know, the first thing that I, you know, we recommend to our clients and that what we're doing is mining our, you know, our tales, we're mining our stories um, and looking for where is the intersection between our stories and what's happening in, um, in the industry or in trends or what's timely. Um, and, and trying to create a, a program that's interesting to press mm -hmm. and knowing, you know, thinking like a reporter, press are looking for, you know, like yourself, are looking for, are looking for stories. They're looking for news to pitch to their editors, to pitch mm -hmm. to um, the publications that they freelance for. So um, the, the idea of hosting a wine tasting for press is a bit of a misnomer because the press can can re can taste the taste the wines on their own. They're uh, most press that are writing about wine are are fairly accomplished tasters. Mm -hmm. So the wines become um, a bit of a tool to tell the rest of the story. Um, they become a way uh, in, into the winery's um, philosophy, a way into the uh, the philosophy of the winemaker. Um, so that's really the first thing, which is to identify what stories we want to tell and how that, how they intersect with what's happening now. Um, in terms of developing a target audience, we're, you know, we're constantly looking at who's writing about wine and that has really exploded over the last, um, 10 years and even more so in the last five years. Um, if, and, and, and removing the judgment of who they're communicating to, to start with. So okay. you've got, you've got um, writers who are writing for a very sophisticated audience, um, mm -hmm. very sophisticated wine audience in the Wine Spectator, all the way to somebody who has a following on Twitter. So mm -hmm. um, first, just identifying who's writing about wine and what audiences are they reaching. Um, and then figuring out where our clients or where the stories of the particular wineries that we want to host an event for mm -hmm. um, are, um, you know, where those live. So um, then, you know, then just making a list of what's, what, what's the, where's the cross section of those, of those two things. So um, does that make sense? Yeah, so it sounds like it's not so much a vetting process as it is more of a categorization process um, when you're thinking about who you're going to pitch to or who you're going to um, tailor these experiences for. Um, so to your point, you know, are, am I pitching to um, industry writers or am I pitching to people writing for consumers or am I pitching to people who are specifically social media personalities? Um, and then kind of fitting your experiences and, and who, which clients are going to speak to which audience. 
Is that? I think that's a great way. I think that's a great way of putting it in terms of um, that. You know, categorizing where do these, who are these writers talking about? Um, I think for for years. Um, the industry has really focused on trying to reach one particular audience, um, mm -hmm. and that audience um, goes out and buys wine. Um, right. We haven't always been the best at um, bringing more people into our wine culture um, or into wine education and recognizing that the um, that the person who's interested in wine and and is starting to get into writing might not be the might not be the same they might be enjoying it in a different way that i am um so uh, really opening up and trying to be the you know uh a conduit of information um and stories that will get more and more people interested in in one and i think that that's really changing now and i'm really really excited about that um and recognizing that the the person on the other end of um who's asking the questions isn't always coming to wine in the same the same direction that 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 i am right okay so keeping that in mind what would you say are um some of the formats that have worked for you um, when when working with your winery clients to um, create these experiences for media. So it sounds like there's almost, like I said, three different categories of media. There may be even more if you get down to niche markets as well. Mm -hmm. um, but what are some of the, some of the formats that have worked for you, and um, you know how do they differ depending on who you're talking to? Yeah, I think um, you know one just is the Zoom meeting. Um, I think now that we're all getting much, much more comfortable with um, the platform of, of Zoom and these webinar platforms, there's a number of them out there and we're, we're investigating more and more of them that, to give richer, fuller experiences um, and being able to share information um, across, you know, across this digital media. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but also looking at things like Reddit um, and how, you know, if, if there's a way to do a Reddit taste, you know, uh, discussion huh. or um, uh, also the um, Instagram, you know, the, the Instagram has been a, a great platform as well. It's just it's a bit more informal and people can pop on and pop off. Um, and, uh, you know, my favorite so far has really been the, the webinar style because mm -hmm. um, you're, you're inviting people into a private room to have a conversation, um, a Q&A. We like the Q&A format um, mm -hmm. because uh, our spokespeople don't have to be, they don't have to have all, all of the answers and we can help them help them along um, as a host. And then they can, uh, pretending we're, we're one of the reporters, we're asking specific questions um, and with the idea of getting information to share and stories to share with with the writers. So by Q and A format, do you mean specifically you're you're the moderator asking the questions, or is it more audience involved? Where ah, if I'm question. sitting there, I'm I'm I get to ask the questions, or at least type them in, or something. Right. Um, no, we like to have a moderator. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, somebody um, who's hosting the event, welcoming everybody and explaining what um, what we're going to cover today and then scripting it out. I mean, I think a script is really um, is really a valuable tool. I mean, I've also got, you know, note cards where you can just, you know, write your little notes down um, mm -hmm. and, you know, three or four words on a note card to remember, OK, this is the type of question that I want to ask next. Um, and it just helps. It helps. Number one, um, the the person who's the spokesperson, uh, the winemaker, or um, the winery owner, to be a little bit more comfortable in the the setting. This may not be their day to day job. Right. Um, they may not be the most um, comfortable in front of a group. So um, they're they're the expert here, and um, the marketing and public relations team can play reporter. Um, or play the person um, like a television interview. Mm -hmm. This, you know, um, tell us more about this, or can you explain the challenges that you've 
experience during, um, during last harvest and how did you overcome those and how are we tasting that in the wines here today? So um, questions that are, that are soft and leading into that, um, in giving them a, a place where they can tell, tell their story. And how, how important for you in your experience has been audience involvement? Because I know I've been part of media tastings where um, I don't even get to see the rest of um, the journalists who are in the room. It's, it's basically a webinar as you would think it, um, you know, just watching somebody mm-hmm. give a presentation. But then on the other hand, I've also been, and, and with Benson, I've been in, in media tastings where um, not only can I see the panelists and as well as the moderator, but I can see my fellow journalists and we're able to communicate kind of throughout the, the discussion and pop in with questions. Um, is, that, is that something that you find is successful or is it easier just to have everybody on mute and have, you know, mm-hmm. your, your clients say their piece? Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's, uh, there's cases for both um, mm-hmm. in terms of uh, the, the, the group of writers who are writing about, about wine. Um, they do tend to, to know each other, and it is helpful. I think um, there's a lot of cross-pollination of story ideas that happen between writers. Um, so having people uh, be able to see each other as if we were around a table, as you know, in, in a year ago, we were sitting around a table in New York um, with, you know, 10 people around um, having dinner. And today we've got 10 people on, um, on a webinar style event um but the but the idea is the same as what what can they what can everybody in the room um add to the experience um that's that's one tack and then another i think you know um uh, yeah come in we're going to tell you something and we're going to present something and then we're going to leave mm-hmm. it, it, it It just depends on um, what information you want to share and how interactive um, that you want to be. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, Another thing that I I actually wanted to touch on too, and and you talked a little bit about this, um, the actual tasting part. So we talked about this a little bit before in our kind of pre-interview, but one of the most recent tastings that I participated in, um, we did receive wines, um, but during the actual, webinar discussion, which involved um, just a handful of journalists so we were able to see each other and and ask questions to the panelists. Um, We actually didn't taste the wines during that time. We talked about the wines, um, but we talked more about the the story behind the wines. And so um, I just want you to put your, um, because you have some good insight about why tasting the wine during during that time isn't necessarily the most important thing. Right, right. Um, I always view the wines as the tools. They are a, a vehicle into your your philosophy and into your winery. They are they are you in in a lot of ways, right? It's in terms of the winery story. Um, but if we focus so much on the wine um, and the aspects of the wine that oh, it ha- you know it is a hundred percent. Pinot Noir, and it's made from this clone, and it's made in this place. We lose sight of um, we lose sight of what it's trying to tell us, um, and that is it the story of the larger place that you come from, um, the the challenges that you go through every year to make that that wine um, and to express that land. So um, if you if you eat up all of your time going through information, little bits of information and tasting wine, um, you, you lose the opportunity to, because people's attention spans are, are fairly short. And if you're trying to get through a lot of information, then you're going to lose that chance to really tell a story and give the reporters something that they can then take back to their editors. At the end of the day, we want these events to be useful for the writer. And what's useful for the writer is news, insight, 
uh, what's, what special thing do you have to share that only you can share about that or that you are in a particularly good position to share? Um, meaning you've got 40 years experience in the Santa Lucia Highlands like our client um, Han Family Wines does, or are you uh, growing in three different neighborhoods in the Russian River Valley? Or do you have a particular um, you know, expertise in growing single vineyard wine? So we want to know those, those stories. We don't necessarily, as, especially for a wine-sophisticated um, journalist, they don't need to hear what the winemaker thinks it tastes like. I, I, can, I can do that on my own. What I want to know are all those little details and those, um, those co- you know, cocktail party style information that you just these little insights into, into what's happening. Um, and if there's time to taste through a couple wines, then that's great. But that's, if you've got 45 minutes and a, a captive audience, I'd rather spend more time talking about the people, the place, than the, the specific um, granularities about the wine. And, you know, through the chat function, the, if the journalist wants to know about a particular fact or factoid about a wine, um, they're going to ask it. So, and that can always be um, addressed in, a, in the end of that sort of a, you know, last Q&A style um, you know, opportunity. But... Tell your stories, tell your news, tell, um, you know, the, those insights that you have into your particular region. That's, that's going to set you up for, uh, you know, more interest from the writers in, in the future. And so how would you prepare your winery clients for this? Because like you mentioned earlier, um, winemakers, you know, some of them just prefer to be in the field or in the cellar. They're not necessarily the spokesperson. Um, so, I mean, I guess the question is almost twofold. I mean, is the winemaker necessarily the right person to have on screen? Maybe sometimes, maybe not, but if it is, if it is someone who's been 40 years in the industry and maybe they just aren't, you know, being in front of people or being in front of a camera is not their thing. Um, are there some tips, tricks that you have to help prepare your clients for this kind of experience to tell a compelling story? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think it's pra- practice, 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 um, to, and building in enough time um, the, between the time that you've invited the writers, you've sent the wines. Now, what are we, and, and um, what are we going to say? So, practicing both um, in through media briefing. So, having everything written down. This is who's going to be there. This is this the questions that we want you to be able to answer and giving the spokesperson, whoever that is, whoever decides, Mm -hmm. you know, whoever you decide is that spokesperson. Mm -hmm. Um, And then um, getting on a couple of these and doing it a few times and practicing through some of the questions and saying, you know, if, you know, if, if something goes wrong and it, and it will (laughs) just keep moving, just keep moving forward. So I think if you remove that barrier of like the scary factor of the technology, um, I I think, I think anybody can, can be successful um, with enough practice. It's just like another event. I mean, we prepare for these in the same way we would um, for a media tour in um, within a region. Um, we prepare the same way any any event it's you know what are the tools that we need what's the time frame you know and when when are we getting this done it just so happens that we can now talk to people or we're not talking to people across the country and the cost is is so much less um and the time commitment is is less but you still have to prepare as if it were an event you, you're trying to communicate something and, and preparation is key. So you, you bring up an interesting point, and this is something that I kind of like to ask everybody. So with this whole COVID situation, you know, we're not traveling to, like, I'm not going to Pazzo to taste the Pazzo wines. The Pazzo right. wines are coming to me. Um, 
Do you think that this is something that will continue in mm -hmm. the wonderful world that we're calling post COVID? Um, whenever that might be, right? Yeah, whenever that <laughs> might be. Do you, is this something that you guys will keep up? Because it's, it's really cool to see, you know, myself as well as writers from like Chicago and, you know, New mm -hmm. York and these little tiny cities in the middle of nowhere who probably, you know, it would be a commitment to get on a plane and come over and do like, you know, Hospice de Rhone and Paso Robles or whatever it is. Um, do you think this is something that you guys are going to continue to offer your clients, offer the media and just continue? Yeah, I think we'll offer it as long as we have, there's appetite for it. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, we're finding if you've removed the barrier of technology, um, and the scariness factor there, uh, and you're able to talk to a wider audience um, all at the same time. Mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, I think it fits, you know, it's, it's efficient, meaning it's, it's efficient for our winemakers who are very busy people. Um, it's efficient for writers who are spending their time pitching. We're, you know, we're not talking to editors so much anymore. I mean, we, there is no, there's no such thing as, you know, everybody on staff any longer. So you've got freelance journalists who need to spend the time pitching, pitching, pitching in order to make um, the bottom line for, for their day-to-day -day life. So they don't have a lot of time either. So getting on a plane and coming and spending four days in Paso Robles, the, the average freelancer needs to be able to get two or three stories out of that, that trip. So, and they need to be able to place those stories and get paid for those stories. So if we can, you know, give them some of those um, that information to be able to pitch to their editors. And then once they get that story, they can come on out, they can do whatever, you know, you know, eventually um, they can come and do that. But, you know, I just, people's time is so, so valuable. Um, and I think the type of writer that we're talking to as an industry is, um, is changing too. So um, that's, uh, it's just an important thing that we need to have this in our arsenal. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. My, my last question is based on your experience and you are in the PR industry, you are the VP of a PR company. Um, what, what would you say are the benefits of working with a PR company? Um, mm. You know, if, if wineries are interested in doing this kind of thing, but they're maybe they're not comfortable or they're still, you know, they haven't had that much success. Are, are there some benefits to working with a company like Benson um, to help them get their story out there via these virtual experiences? Right. Um, you know, I think what we offer um, or an agency offers is a bit of a perspective. Um, we sit sort of between um, your audiences and the industry. We're, we're not in the wine industry per se. Um, we, we specialize in wine and spirits, but we can see the industry a bit broader. Um, and I think we look at ourselves, and lots of agencies do, like a, as a platform. What can, what can we offer our clients a cross-platform that's both valuable to them as well as, as well as the journalist or the freelancer? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we've had a lot of success in packaging up stories um, with multiple winemakers as spokespeople. So mm -hmm. looking across um, our client portfolio, we have a number of um, exceptional Pinot Noir producers. So the, that most recent tasting in which we had somebody comment on three different regions um, throughout California, it's just a richer experience for the journalist. It's more valuable to the journalist um, and the, the wineries are then seen as experts of that particular region. So I, I wouldn't discount, you know, that idea too, to even if you're not working with an agency of working with your neighbors to tell a larger story or working with a, you know, a, a different partner, um, you know, contemporary uh, complementary partner to to tell a particular story that you want to share that's not necessarily or perhaps like a, a regional meaning. board a it's regional board or um, even somebody that you know has a similar philosophy um, journalists you know the press audience is looking for something 
that's a bit different. That's not just um, about one about one wine. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. great. Any other thoughts or yeah. comments that you have that you wanted to share? I think you know, practice is one. Script things out is another tip um, mm-hmm. for sure. Um, making sure that you can be heard as well. So being clear, um, clear in your communication, but uh, using your mics, using either just your earbud or getting an external mic is a great, um, great option. Our computers are just, um, some of the newer ones do have good speakers and mm-hmm. good uh, microphones, but, you, um, but some of the older ones do not. So making sure that you can be heard is important. We're a, we're a screen culture. So, um, making sure that you look attractive on the, on the screen, meaning, and I don't mean like that you're, you know, <laughs> that, that you've got, you know, decent lighting, um, that people can see you, that you are sitting up straight and you're, um, communicating, you've got, um, a dark color or a solid color on as a shirt that's not mm-hmm. distracting, um, looking about what's in your, in your background. Um, we've had winemakers on, um, the screen and it's, it's, it's great that they're in their natural environment. They're like right there. They're a winemaker. It's credibility building. Um, mm-hmm. So where, where are you sitting? What are you doing? What are you sharing? So, um, so I would just think about those things in addition to what you're going to say is mm-hmm. how you're going to say it. Excellent. Well, thank you, Sarah, for joining us. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share some some insight and um i look forward to doing more of these i i can't wait to hear what what some of the writers are are thinking themselves i i think you should maybe interview somebody uh absolutely, you know, contemporary. Um, absolutely. that would be terrific actually yeah. we were we were in discussion about perhaps doing a panel discussion of media so i'm putting it out there now <laughs> do it do it <laughs> great well thank you again for the t- uh, for the time and um Look forward to seeing the seeing you at the next one. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Thank you.